What's up everybody? Mike from Tata to Mike here with another review. And now this is another fan film. This is part two of Friday the 13th Vengeance called Bloodlines. So also it's called Vengeance Bloodlines part two. Uh, this continues the Friday the 13th Vengeance with Elijah Voorhees, Jason's dad, trying to get rid of the Jarvis family and I guess resurrect Jason permanently or something like that. So this continues the family. I think maybe it's like, like a week or two down the road and Jason's still on a killing spree. A little <laughs> too much of a killing spree, but killing spree. And Elijah needs the bodies of everybody, I guess, to do a ritual. I think what they want to do is they bring back Jason's mom. So uh, you know, the daughter, they're still looking for Tommy. Tommy's missing. And just all hell breaks loose. Daughter gets kidnapped. One of the daughters gets kidnapped, and then uh, you find out that the the caretaker guy's been working both sides, Elijah and Tommy, and uh, yeah, it leads to a bunch of bunch of kills, a lot of kills, um, and you've got the final showdown with Tommy, who Tom Matthews reprises his role in this one. Like he did in Never Hike Alone 2. And you got a final battle, which is a recap, a rebattle of part six. Even the Tommy ends up uh, in the Tommy Jarvis clothes, and the Jason looks like the Jason from part six, even though he's got the sack over his head. But uh, at the end of it all, the dad wants him to kill the two girls, I guess, to bring the mom back from the books and bring them to like, the shrine where the the head is and everything and at the end we think he kills one of them he doesn't but Jason can't do it and then Tommy comes to save the day uh, Tommy's daughter holds the head as a ransom then at the end Jason gets mad he says you're a disappointment Puts this, he becomes the sack head Jason from part 2 again kills his dad by right through the chest pulls out the heart smushes the heart then goes on a battle with uh, Tommy during that time, one of the daughters crushes Pamela Voorhees' head. And then what they do is, because they uh, the old man caretaker guy brought the original rod from part six that brings Jason back to life, which Tommy screwed up in, happens to be a thunderstorm, and he thinks that's the way to destroy Jason, so they stab him again. Tommy gets him again. And we think it's the end. So, don't know if it's the end. I don't know if it's going to be a part three of this, or if this was the end of that saga that this person made, but it was good. Uh, camera work was really well done. Uh, the music, it's all bits and parts of other Friday the 13th movies, like the first one, but still good. Uh, the runtime is very long for a fan film, an hour and 47 minutes, if I remember correctly. Uh, and there is... A lot of kills. If you're here to watch kills in a Jason movie, you're set. Uh, to me, I thought it was a little overkill on the kills. Uh, and a little overkill on the idiots and the bimbos, too. Sorry. Too much of that. I know it's a custom in a Jason movie to have that, but a little too much. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about... Uh, <laughs> this is hard to say. Three scenes, three kills that I like. But you know what? Uh, first one would have to be uh, that pr that that prison inmate. You find out how he died, and uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And there's a little there's a little error in that scene too. So I'll tell you guys about it after. So check this out. Most of the prisoners. <sighs> yeah, Ken Slate. All right. The strength it would take to crush a head that size and a skull this thick. It's and there you have it. So it's, you know, it rips half the head off, brains. But then if you watch carefully while they're, while the coroner's talking about them, 
I, I think the corner of the finger gets too close to the eye, and the eye, it's like, does that. It's supposed to be dead. But the eye twitch it was an error that was put in the movie. I guess they didn't see it, or they saw it at the end, and they said, okay, well, we're not going to re-edit it. We'll just keep it like that. Uh, the second kill I'm going to like, and I'm going to talk about in the scene, is, uh, you know what? The, uh, I don't remember her name, but I'm going to call her the Hot Mess, because she had the Hot Mess satchel. I thought she was going to be one of the ditzy girls, and you know what? Out of all of them, she put up a pretty damn good fight against Jason before she died. So, check this out. Hey! Asshole! I'm not dead yet! She, she fought pretty damn hard, and she's a past survivor of Jason. So, but she got her demise by being split in half, as you saw. And the final, uh, final scene that I'm going to talk about is the end when they go back into the original how they looked like from part six and how Jason gets killed in this one. So, check this out. So that's my thoughts. I'm going to throw in a fourth one in this one because it is a long movie. It's just a kill that I thought was interesting, uh, to say the least, was uh, Angie's friend. So uh, when she's trying to escape, goes to the fence, fights back, and, well, you'll see. Check this out. Oh See, they just rips off the whole back end of her, and then she dies that way. But it's a unique kill. Uh, there's way too many of these unique kills in this movie. If I can talk about them all the time. There's the chainsaw with the face. There's uh, the door. They, they did way too many of them. I find there's way too many different kills in this. But it's still cool. If you like Carnage Candy, I recommend you guys checking this out. Uh, I still like the first one better. Uh, I would give this one... A 3.5 out of 5. I think I gave the last one a 4. I'd give this one a 3.5 because of the too much killing. Too much blood splatter everywhere. Too much fakeness. Like the, One of my kills I liked at first was the guy on fire. And the, that changed a lot. Because you saw it looked like just a stuck person in the fire. Jason on fire was kind of cool too. But there's a lot of things that were cool in the movie. But then little things about it that... Yeah. But I still recommend you guys checking it out. Like the other one, the link will be in the description along with his YouTube channel if you want to check him out. But it's still cool. I'm doing a couple of Jason fan films because I, I wanted a bit of a Halloween fan film binge for a bit. So now I'm jumping in some Jasons. So, but uh, yeah. So like always, if you've got a fan film or a short or just a movie you want me to review or a TV series, send me that email or send me a message on my social media. 
always reply back, send me the link, and I'll check it out, and I'll review it, or if it's a movie you gotta buy, I'll pick it up. Also, if you're not following me on YouTube, if you're not, well, if you're watching me on YouTube now, but if you're not following me, it is right there. Click that notification button for every time something new comes out, whether it be one of these reviews, a Pokemon episode, now I got the Magic the Gathering, uh, and I'm gonna have my own like I said, mini series coming through web series and some fan films of my own, which I'm gonna love to see the reviews on those. And like always, thanks for watching. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm Todd to the mic. Take care. I'm <laughs>